Hello everyone, welcome to the Redmen TV. It is transfer latest. It is a Tuesday? Yes, it's a Tuesday. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun watching Liverpool not win games of football? Um, yes, we're going to be talking through a couple of transfer bits and pieces. As ever, nothing massively concrete, but I thought it's always worth a discussion to see what the Reds are doing and keep you all abreast of anything, any little tidbits of information that might prove useful down the line. I uh, just want to say thank you so much to Snickers Protein, Snickers Protein, uh, for powering the transfer latest show. Uh, you can get involved. I'm going to be answering some of your questions later on. Tweet us at the Redmen TV using the hashtag fanline. Uh, if you've got any gripes, thoughts, feelings, emotions, great transfer stories, anything, uh, you can send them in. If you tweet them to at Ball Street as well, um, the Deadline Day live show is coming on Monday the 1st, Monday evening. Me and Chris are going to be involved with all of that. Uh, and you can feature in the show by sending some of your little video questions in as well. So do get involved with all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah. Can't wait to get into those in a little bit. Uh, there are some really good questions, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, so stay tuned. Uh, well, the first thing we're going to discuss, uh, and it's on the title of the video, is that Liverpool are in or close to the signing of Derby County wonder kid Cade Gordon. Um, yeah, this comes from the Lancashire Telegraph and the Derby Telegraph and a whole other bunch of telegraphs that are clearly all linked together and just spread content around, but I got it from the Lancashire Telegraph. Uh, it said, Liverpool are set to win the race to sign Derby County's wonder kid... Um, Cade Gordon Man United and Tottenham Hotspur have also been linked with the 16 year old but they appear to have lost out Gordon will instead pick a move to Anfield with Liverpool paying more than £1 million to lure him over to Merseyside Darby wants the teenager to remain as he's highly rated at Pride Park but the lure of playing for Liverpool seems to have turned his head uh, he's already made his first team debut for Derby having impressed boss Wayne Rooney in training I looked into that he's played one minute of championship football so I wouldn't worry too much about that being uh, like oh he's got tons of championship experience he's, he's, he's literally played a minute for them um okay good good fine um I've got no problem with this because and I'm sure I've seen already in the comments and, and fair play in a world where Liverpool are crying out for um for the center half it fe uh, for many it will fall on deaf ears the idea of keeping recruitment going and um, throughout the levels of the club now th this strikes me that if he's 16 17 we've got a couple of good players around that sort of age bracket and it's whether he'll jump from under 18 straight into the under 23s I imagine he will and if he's really good he'll go into that like developmental group that sort of hovers between the under 23s and the first team this is smart for me because you know, if he's a homegrown player in particular, um, Brexit has screwed all of Liverpool's plans to hoover up the best talent from around the continent. So do it, do it in the UK. Get local lads, and particularly at that age, you can keep him. You can take. You can technically have him as an academy player. So by the time he's done three seasons, I think that's right with it. Um, he'll class as a proper Liverpool homegrown. So that's smart. It's canny in a way where you don't. You know. It shows that Liverpool aren't grinding their transfer business to a halt because they can't get the the centre off of their dreams or whatever. But it's nice that it means that you know it's not they're they're not absolutely you know capsizing everything they're doing all from top to bottom. It shows that Liverpool still being reasonably well run in that regard. Um, next article is a nice little flight of fancy. I think Chris discussed Kylian Mbappe the other day. Um, let's do it again because uh, Sport Witness, um, who were talking, um, referring to an article from Sport. Um, um, the uh, sport was to cover the last to cover the Kylian Mbappe situation on January 19th, and their report explained that the Reds are willing to compete financially with Real Madrid for Kylian Mbappe. Uh, it's also stated Jurgen Klopp is in regular contact with the 22 year old and his camp, and the manager is leading the Merseyside club's interest in the player. With the contract expiring in 2022, Mbappe has admitted he is thinking very hard. Think, think. Think um, over signing extension with league on winners. Bet you didn't think you were getting Winnie the Pooh references on the transfer show on a Tuesday evening, but there you go. It's what I'm bringing to the table. Uh, Mundo Deportivo and Tuesday stated FSG have accelerated their efforts to tie him down to a new contract, but he isn't in a hurry to sign a deal. Real Madrid are studying different formulas. None of this is actually quotations, which I'm why I'm not I'm not thick. And why I'm doing single inverted commas because it's literally what's in the article. Uh, they're studying different formulas to sign the World Cup winner since PSG are going to ask for 160 million euros to let him leave. His 21 million net per season salary would also be taken into account. For now, uh, the La Liga winners 
cannot afford, yep, cannot afford these figures since they've invested in remodeling the stadium. In addition to this, their finances are impacted by the coronavirus crisis. Um, there being one formula to offer Vinicius Jr. as part of the deal since they've been long asking about the Brazilian, apparently. Another hope is the FSG star decides against signing a new contract and arriving as a free agent in Madrid in 2022. Um, Mundo um, have explained that Liverpool, once again, can take advantage of Real Madrid's financial situation since they're keen on signing the, signing the former AS Monaco man and then just bear with me on this one there's no mention over how the English champions can finance the operation <laughs> just get, so there's a number of formulas in which Real Madrid can do I can do that Liverpool could also hope that his contract runs out and they sign him on a free in 2022 um, they could offer Cade Gordon um, as part of a swap deal for it because I'm sure they'd be well interested in it. We get Wayne Rooney to recommend um, that'd be great. We get Steve McManaman um, to you know to put Real Madrid off and say that it's rubbish because he's got those connections. Michael, he's the next Michael Owen. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> Liverpool would absolutely bite PSG's hand off to sign uh, Kylian Mbappe, but I can't imagine a world where Liverpool can't afford to spend. 20, 30, 40 million pounds on a centre half in January that they're going to be able to afford 150 million pounds in the summer. But stranger things have happened. Um, okay, uh, one player who chose not to join Liverpool in the summer, uh, amongst others, uh, is teenager Jeremy Doku. Doku! Uh, sounds like a player you'd buy if you tried to pick up some sort of you know Dragon Ball Z figurine on Wish, but there you go. Um, the teenage winger has opened up on not signing for Liverpool. He was asked why he rejected it. He said he believed it was too soon to move to Anfield. He said he's a lot to learn before making such a big move and having chosen Ren. Instead, he said it was an ideal destination. He said, I did a lot of research, wrote down all the positive points, and only then did I make a decision. I knew that I wanted to, first to make an immediate step. Going to a top club now would be too soon. I still have a lot to learn, and Ren is the ideal place for that. Apparently, he hasn't scored a goal for Ren since joining the 18 year old. Uh, so, definitely want to keep an eye on him whether Liverpool will then use him, um, you know, pick him up after having another year or two of development. But it goes to show, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll pick up on this in a moment, that Liverpool have wider transfer plans. Um, um, there could be an interesting place. Right, one last thing, uh, a bit of a random one, uh, and this, this might go for your most weird and unlikely potentially transfer story uh, of the day. Um, Zizuology on Twitter um, claims that Liverpool wants to sign Brazilian forward Keiki from Fluminense. Uh, they've been scouting him for a while and, contra and contacted his staff in recent days after getting to know about a bid from Shakhtar. Wow, Shakhtar Donetsk's moving for, for young Brazilian. Shock, absolutely shocked. We, we should, we should, okay. Um, Liverpool don't want to miss out on Keiki. He's the best performing under 17 forward in Brazil right now. Liverpool requested more information about him and has a career plan drawn out, just like they presented the goalkeeper, Marcelo Pitaluga. Um, interesting. So I, I, I thought, my first response to this, I'm not reading his name out loud until I've done some cursory research on him. Um, Transfer Marked has him as a profile, no photo, um, saying that he was born on June the 11th, 2003, 17 years old, position, attack, um, no goals, no caps, uh, has played for the Brazilian under-17s, and his full name, is, his name in his home country is Keiki da Silva Chagas. Great. Um, he plays for Fluminense under 17s. Now, he, he's got, uh, according to another website I found, which is playmakerstats.com, uh, his summary for 2020. Um, in the Copa do Brasil uh, under under 17s, he played five games and scored four goals. Nice. Uh, for the under 20s, uh, he's made two games, no goals. Under 17s, 15 games and 12 goals, meaning he's played a grand total of 17 games in 2020, or 22 games in 2020 with 16 goals. Um, there's talk of him being a great under-17 star and Liverpool are keeping an eye on him. Sad. I'm absolutely made up with that. Um, do more of that, Liverpool. Um, so the fan line questions, and I think this is quite, this kind of ties into it. Uh, Doug Hildreth and Jack uh, at the Baileys22 using the hashtag fan line, which you can do too if you want to get your uh, questions on tomorrow's show. Uh, so, uh, Doug first and foremost says, where are some future needs we might want to address in the summer slash near future to avoid another VVD type problem? Uh, and Jack saying, how many players do you think we'll need ahead of next season? Um, yeah, uh, it, it, the interesting thing about Liverpool's squad is I think there's a number of positions where you could potentially, I don't know about improving the first team, 
At some point, you're going to have to refresh the front three, and that will depend how Jota comes back, and that might ease a little bit of the pressure on that. But you're then gonna, if you're going to move any of the front three on, you're definitely going to need another ready-made star to go in there, I think. But maybe that's Jota, but then means you need someone to take Jota's place in the squad as the next dot, dot, dot. Um, I think what you'd be looking at, and this is just if you've been brutal, right here, right now, I would look and go, what positions do we not have a senior professional understudy? And that position is goalkeeper, uh, right back, and then probably one more for the front three. They're the absolute necessities for what we do. Uh, and maybe you need to get a better a better young centre-half because you need somebody who's better than Reese Williams. And, and we don't know what's happened with Billy Cometto. He might be the answer to that, but, but, but yada, yada. Um, so I think that's what Liverpool need to do. I don't think there's too much you can do. When Liverpool have got Van Dijk and Gomez, um, you still need okay, you still need a, a, probably someone who's, a, who's not as brittle as, as a partner for Virgil van Dijk, definitely. Um, but again, our first eleven's great, and then we've got a few players underneath that who are absolutely fantastic too. So it's really just about can you get one maybe the odd star who's just better, like the Thiago thing, or, or what we're seeing with Jota. Um, but other than that, it's tough, it's tough to add to that add to that kind of squad. Um, and it's hard to avoid a Virgil van Dijk situation. You can't replace Virgil van Dijk, but what you could do is you could have another Joe Gomez, which it sounds a bit disrespectful. I think Gomez is fantastic. But if you picked up like a, is it Shares from, uh, from Ajax? If you put in him in, I think Gomez. I think Gomez is meant to be the understudy for Van Dijk long term, and then you're looking to get someone in who does the bits and pieces and has got the cover and pace and that kind of stuff to do to do the bit of the dirty work alongside it. Because I think Gomez has got a good temperament to be moved that, even though he might be slightly too short. But we'll have to see. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers those questions. And Rich uh, Jive in the Hive with a great question here. He said, "Would you guys prefer a defender this January if it meant not having the funds to bring in a Haaland or Mbappe in the summer?" Now it's really interesting that you should. Um, you should ask that question because we actually had this big discussion on the Reds News Roundup show on on the website. So if you remember um, over on our uh, streaming service over on the RedmanTV.com, you can watch this in a bit more detail. But that's the thing that we're not we're never privy to as fans is that Liverpool play a play a long game. You know, they play two three seasons um, in advance in a lot of times. And I at the moment I, because I live in the here and now and I want immediate success and immediate satisfaction because I, I because why not? I don't want us to miss out on Liverpool being the top team right now I would maybe sacrifice next a bit of the next transfer window to get to, to box off what we need because I still think in the summer we're going to need a centre half so we might as well get that done now because you don't know what's going to happen to Virgil van Dijk and you don't know how long Gomez is going to take to get it back up to speed so I think we're in that market regardless so you might as well do it um, the big concern is I think we're going to have to rep- I think Mo Salah if he doesn't go this summer, he'll go next summer. And I think, look, in an ideal world, not a COVID, not a COVID season, I think we absolutely would have moved him on this summer. Um, but we'll have to see. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very interesting one. But do let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, right, yes, if you want more from us, if you want more transfer chat in more depth and detail, check out the uh, Reds News Roundup every single week on the uh, on the RedmenTV.com. Uh, do check back tomorrow. Uh, if you want to get your questions in, tweet us at the Redmen TV. You hashtag fan line uh, there'll be a tweet that goes out every day you can just put it in there if you want to and yeah if you want to send any um, video clips or whatever and then do that as well because deadline day is looming me and Chris are going to be live on the Ball Street channel on Monday the 1st of February do tune in for that and I'll see you all very very soon <laughs>